format of tonight's meeting is to have a guest speaker share their experience, strength and hope on how the, the Alcoholics Anonymous program of recovery is working in their lives for 15 to 20 minutes. Tonight, we have asked Mick to share. <laughs> yeah, my name's Mick, I'm an alcoholic, I'm sober today through the grace of God and Alcoholics Anonymous. How you going? It's good to be here. I say this every time I share because it's a truth for me. I'm here because I don't want to drink and I don't want to go back to where I came from. It's pure and simple for me. I don't want to drink, I don't want to go back, there's nothing fancy about it. And to be completely honest with you, I can care less if I'm the most spiritual person in the room or the least spiritual person in the room. I'm not drinking today under any circumstances. No matter what happens in my life, I don't pick up the first drink or the first stroke. Um, and, uh, and, and if I if I stick to that, then I've got a shot at obtaining and maintaining what I believe I need to to uh, <coughs> to get you know long term continuous sobriety. And that is that I need to find some peace within me. And uh, and that has been the journey of my recovery to find some peace within me. And um, and I've found it through a connection with a higher power and through the twelve steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, through the people in Alcoholics Anonymous, and, uh, and I've had a lot of guidance and a lot of support. And uh, day at a time, I'm, you know, day at a time I'm getting better, you know. Um, but it's a long journey. You know, they, they said it was going to be a long journey, and uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, I can, I can, you know, confirm that as well. I'm, I'm 11 and a half years clean and sober, and I should be dead. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, you know, I was in trouble. You know, I believe I was an alcoholic waiting to happen. Um, you know, uh, I had that um, you know square peg in a round hole, that deep sense of loneliness. You know, I felt embarrassed of myself. All of that kind of stuff felt different before I drank. I remember the first day that I did drink. Um, you know, seriously drank, and um, and I remember the way that made me feel. You know, uh, and it was electric. You know, and I loved it. I loved it. You know, I wanted to drink. You know, I just, all I wanted to do was drink. From the age of you know somewhere between 12 and 14, when I picked up my first drink, all I wanted to do was drink. And, uh, um, alcoholism had me put on a sinker. You know, to me, the grog was the answer to all my problems. You know, and all my problems really were me. The way I felt in this world, you know, and um, um, but it, also right from the word go, alcohol created a lot of drama in my life and caused a lot of damage to me um, and to everyone that was around me. You know, um, I was in children's court when I was 14 um, through stuff that I did on the booze. You know, and I, when I drank, I had a personality change. I did not resemble the same person that I was when I was sober. You know, and as a 13-year-old little boy, I was a beautiful natured little boy. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have hurt a soul on this earth. Um, just wanted to be loved, all that sort of stuff. And I can tell you that by the end of my drinking and using, I'd done, um, I'd, I'd done time in most of the jails in Victoria. I'd also um, done a prison sentence up in Queensland. Um, I'd been through the homeless system. Um, I'd been through over 30 rehabs and detoxes by the time I was 25. Um, had um, numerous suicide attempts, ranging from not very serious to serious, you know, and uh, um, you know, and uh, it was just absolute mayhem and destruction. And um, and for the last five or so years of my drinking, I picked up heroin, you know, and I, I had a, a vicious smack at it, you know, and um, yeah, my life was um, full of sadness, and, uh, and I was a broken person, and. Um, you know, I guess one of the real tragedies of my life, um, you know, really hit me at, at, at age 17. <coughs> you know, um, the good side is is that my daughter was born when I was 17, and, um, and the bad side is is that um, I was in a violent relationship with her mother, and um, we split. And, um, and and through this disease, through this illness, um, I wasn't a man. I was only a little boy anyway, and uh, I didn't maintain access with my daughter. You know, and uh, and this disease robbed my daughter of a father, and, um, and and robbed me of my daughter. You know, and um, can't buy that back. You know, in my recovery, I've, I've you know made some amends and I've tried to patch up the past. And I've got a, you know my daughter's 23 now, and um, we reconnected when she was 12, and it took until she was 21, till she was 21 years old before she ever called me dad or ever said I love you in her life. And I craved it every day of my life. I craved it in my drinking and using. I craved it in my jail sentences. I craved it in my sobriety. 
but I couldn't repair that damage from the past, you know, and um, but slowly but surely some of it has, you know, and that's and that's the beautiful fruits of Alcoholics Anonymous and the program of AA. You know, um, this is the stuff that I can't purchase, you know, I can't buy it. I've got to I've got to live this program and, and I've got to put it into action, I've got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I was going over some stuff last night and um, this person said to me the other day, oh, you make sobriety sound easy. I said, yeah, don't, don't drink ketamines, connect in with the HP, you know, um, you know, keep your eyes on yourself, put one foot in front of the other, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And I said, oh, you make it sound so easy. And, uh, and I went back through a, um, a bit of stuff out of my life, you know, just in my sobriety, not in my drinking and using, but in my sobriety, and um, it ain't been easy. I'm not here to sell a fantasy story. For me, it hasn't been easy. You know, um, but my, by God, it's been the most worthwhile thing I've ever done in my life. But it's been a tough ride, you know. A mate of mine out in the Hills area, um, Taxi Ted, um, used to say, um, you know, anybody can go out there and wave these around and have a fight. Not everybody can come in here and put up a fight and stay sober. You know, many fall by the wayside. You know, we come into these meetings, we see so many people come in, and so very few stay. Uh, and it ain't easy. And that's because if it was easy, this room would be full tonight, there wouldn't be any empty seats around. They'd be lining up out the doorway, right? But it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, um, this, is, uh, this isn't, the, um, isn't for the faint-hearted, you know. Um, I, would have, I had to find a way to live life on life's terms with all the damage that I'd done to me in my past. I had to find a way to live life on life's terms in society, right, with no anaesthetic. Other than AA, you know, and um, I just I tell you what, that's pretty tough. And um, because life happens, you know, and um, gone is the fantasy that, you know, once I get sober, oh, I've made it, I'm all right, everything's going to be okay now, you know, and um, um, <laughs> that just isn't the, isn't the case, you know. And look, you know, I'm still, um, I'm still a work in progress, you know, I know I understand that. There's been many, many times in my sobriety where I've seriously, um, you know, wondered about my psychological and emotional well-being. You know, I know that I've been a train wreck of a person and probably still am to some degree, but you know what? I can still function in society. I'm a lot better than I used to be. You know, and I'm getting better. I've been taught in Alcoholics Anonymous to always look for the spiritual progress. Always look for the spiritual progress. You know? And sometimes that spiritual pro progress is not kicking the chair over or, you know, <coughs> we're yelling at someone and, and, and just kind of getting a bit red under and hot under the collar and walking off. To me, that's spiritual progress, you know. Um, you know but, but whatever it is, in any situation, you know, whether it's to do with relationships, whether it's to do with dealing with people, whether it's to deal with, you know, whatever, you know, my kids. But I can tell you that in my sobriety, it's been a, it's been a wonderful journey, you know. Um, like I said, tough but wonderful, you know, and um, I've achieved so much in my sobriety. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible, and, um, and, and, and apart from that, you know, that, that connection again with my daughter, you know, who's 23 now, I've also got two other AA babies, you know. Um, my, my son, Nicky's about to turn 12, and my daughter, Faith's about to turn 7, and these two kids are the love of my life. You know, I've got a connection with my children that I never believed possible. You know, I love them with all of my heart and they love me and, you know, that's, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, um, it's absolutely incredible. And my son says, um, my son says he wants to be like me. sees what struggles I've gone through. He knows about all my past, but he also seen me go through struggles in my sobriety. And he admires me. You know, it means so much to me. I've got respect and love in my life. I've got dignity and self-esteem. I've been taught in Alcoholics Anonymous that I can walk tall and walk free. How true that is. How true that is. You know, my past has become my greatest asset. My greatest asset. It helps me help other people, and when I remember it, it helps me to not go back to where I came from. A mate of mine says that those that forget where they came from are doomed to repeat it. You know? And I don't want to repeat it. No, I do not want to repeat 
should not end in the past. And and you know what? I know that I need to not drink. I know that I need to not use. But I need a lot of help to achieve that and to maintain that. Left to my own devices, I'm a weak person, mentally and emotionally. I can't handle life. I just can't handle it. I need a lot of support. You know, um, um, I have absolutely no problem whatsoever talking about a high power in my life and, um, and, and, and love the fact that depending on what meeting you go to, not all meetings, but some meetings you go to and talk about high power makes a few people uncomfortable. And uh, good, you know, because um, it's a subject that isn't going to go away. You know, it's on the, it's on the banners, everyone talks about it. We say it's really pretty at the end of the meeting, you know, like it's, it's ridiculous to fight it, but, um, you know, the, but you know, the higher power has just been such a massive um, support in my life, you know, like it's, um, to be able to plug that socket into the wall and turn the switch on and connect in with my higher power and, 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 and when, when, it, when it feels like I can't connect with anyone else, you know, um, it's just been integral to my sobriety and um, it's probably been, you know, higher power's probably kept me out of the psych ward sometimes too, let me tell you, you know, but... Um, but I'm here, you know, I'm here, I'm off the side ward, thank goodness. And, um, and, and I'm sober and, you know, I'm, um, I'm in my 40s and, you know, and I've got kids and, you know, I run my own business and, you know, and I make decisions in my life and the fittest I've ever been since I was, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. You know, um, um, like I said, I've got the dignity and the self-respect and the self-esteem, but I'll tell you one thing that I do have as well that I believe is vitally important for me, and that is that I have insight. The reason that I have insight is because somebody who's actually armed, right, and actually knew what he was talking about, or she was talking about, guided me through those 12 steps. Right? Guided me through the 12 steps of alcohol anonymous and showed me how to put them in my life. And when I put those steps in my life, they show me, me. I understand how I tick. And, uh, and, and I can gain insight. I know that it's a spiritual law that whenever I'm emotionally disturbed, the problem's within me. The problem is within me. Doesn't matter who's done what, doesn't matter whose fault it is, what's going on, at the end of the day, there is nothing that I can do about another person. Um, the only thing I can do anything about is me. My attitudes, my defects of character, what I do in my life is the only thing that I have any power over. And I'll tell you what, there's been some very, very bitter lessons along the way that have reinforced that. But it's the way it is. I also know that I'm only as good as the day I'm in. Some days I'm wonderful, Mr. Spiritual. And other days I could probably knock someone's head off. It's the way it is. But you know what, bottom line, I don't drink. I don't drink under any circumstances. And, uh, and I'm very, very grateful to be here. Thanks for asking me to share.